What many people don't seem to know is that recruiting or using your friends or your acquaintances, so generally people you know as your research participants in a qualitative research study, is a perfectly acceptable from the perspective of research ethics and research methodology practice. Uh, a common assumption uh, seems to be that uh, doing so is simply a sign of uh, laziness. It's a lazy approach and the only reason you may want to do it is uh, because of convenience. So basically you know some people you don't feel maybe like uh, recruiting uh, more participants or other participants for your study so you're deciding to use your friends uh, for your study, which is not true as I will explain in this video. And what definitely doesn't help is that there is not much literature on this topic, so you won't find many articles on researching friends. Uh, there are some and I will uh, put the links in the description to this video. But usually uh, a similar issue uh, seemingly uh, in practice is actually quite a different one. Uh, is developing friendships uh, with your participants and this is something that has been discussed in the literature quite extensively but like i said these are two different things so one thing is to develop friendships uh, to uh, to recruit participants and then later on uh, become their friends and a completely different issue is using your friends people you know for your study and there are in fact certain risks associated with using your friends as your research participants and these risks have been discussed in the available, the limited literature that I mentioned. So for example, one of these risks is uh, that there is an issue of shared knowledge between you and your friends. So something that you are assuming, your or your specifically your research participant, your friend is assuming that you know or understand uh, simply because they know, uh, they know you and maybe you have discussed this uh, issue or this story, uh, on some other occasion, not in this research context. But of course, it doesn't matter from the research perspective because they have to say it for you to have it uh, recorded, for you to analyze it and for you to treat it as data. But uh, again, uh, simply because they are assuming uh, that or they are correctly assuming that you know this, uh, they don't feel like they have to share the story of or this opinion with you during the interview. Another issue uh, that has been uh, discussed is simply uh, the feeling of confusion. Confusion uh, about this new role because they know you as a friend and here all of a sudden uh, you are sitting there and you're a researcher and you want to record what they have to say. And finally uh, there is an issue of feeling uh, of the sense of being betrayed. Uh, so basically they are uh, they are sharing something personal with you and later you're publishing it so uh, for everybody uh, to see and a uh, quite a uh, related issue of a feeling like uh, they they have been reduced their personality their stories so everything they said uh, has been reduced uh, to uh, paper stereotypes to something flat you know uh, deprived of depth and deprived of personality so again uh, they are telling you all these stories and they may they may just later find that uh, you only briefly mentioned that in your writing so or maybe you mentioned something uh, that they said or you categorized it as something else so you're discussing a general issue a broad issue uh, that you found in your uh, data and you only briefly mention something that your friend tells you so uh, so again so this may result in this sense of being betrayed so they've uh, you know, they've told you all these deep personal stories and, and then later on on paper it doesn't really uh, look that deep. So all of these are uh, real risks and real issues, but uh, they can also be addressed uh, very easily. And mostly uh, this can be done through communication. So through explaining exactly uh, to your friends uh, what this new, uh, uh, this new and unfamiliar research situation uh, involves and uh, so this includes explaining your role as a researcher so this is uh, what I said uh, previously about the risk of uh, confusion on, of the feeling of confusion about these different uh, new roles so what you can do about it is simply to explain this role to them uh, directly prior to the interview and this is in fact something I, I always uh, recommend doing so not just for researching friends but uh, generally at the beginning of the interview to explain uh, what this situation, what this conversation 
uh, will uh, feel and look like and how it's different from a normal conversation. So you, you need to explain that you are here and uh, your role here is a researcher. So you're not really, this is not really an everyday conversation because here you only want to hear what they have to say and you don't really want to contribute that much, as much as you would do uh, in a normal conversation. And uh, through communication, all the other issues that I mentioned uh, could be addressed as well. So this uh, feeling of uh, betrayal, of course, because you will explain that you will be sharing these stories, but you will also explain uh, and ensure that, uh, of course, you will not share the real identity. Or uh, the feeling of uh, being reduced to a paper stereotype. Again, it's, it's probably just a matter of explaining of explaining what kind of data you'll use and how you will use it. And this is, again, something I always do, not just when uh, investigating, when researching friends. I always explain that I may or may not use uh, extracts from, from this particular interview. Uh, I usually explain that uh, everything you say is valuable, but sometimes is valuable in combination with the rest of the data that I will manage to uh, to obtain from other participants. So it's not always that uh, that I will uh, share extracts from what you told me during this interview, because I know that some people are uh, reluctant to, to have their, their uh, contributions shared, and some people, uh, quite the opposite, they are hoping that their, these contributions will be shared. So they have to understand that not always will you uh, share and report uh, their uh, specific contributions. And it is definitely worth addressing these uh, risks because in my opinion uh, the possible uh, value and the possible advantages of this approach outweigh these possible risks. As I said the risks can be quickly and easily addressed and uh, the advantages of this approach are of course a good report and a good level of trust between you and the participants uh, generally their willingness to share their stories with somebody they they know. Uh, of course this will again depend on what kind of topic you're investigating. So it will require your common sense and I'm sure that uh, you will not struggle with making that decision. So if you're uh, asking about something extremely personal, uh, something that people may not want to uh, to share, then of course it may not be the best idea to ask your friends. If you're conducting a study about some kind of uh, sexual life, for example, uh, unless it's your very best friend, usually most of your friends would not really, they would rather share this information with people they don't know, uh, you know, a researcher who they don't really know, they don't have to worry uh, around that person than, uh, than with you because they know who you are. So. There are some topics where it simply doesn't make sense and as I said it's, it's uh, mostly common sense. You will understand uh, when uh, this fact that you know them may not in fact be an advantage but maybe uh, a challenge to your research. And also there is this general advantage of a deeper level of understanding uh, between you and your participants uh, specifically because of the shared knowledge that I mentioned. So I mentioned that in the context of possible risks because like I said if, if uh, they may not uh, say something because they assume that you know it anyway, so they don't have to say it, but if you address this problem, uh, then this shared knowledge may actually be a big benefit, because simply because it again contributes to this uh, general level of trust, but also it means that you may know that they have something uh, to say. So you may know, and th this in fact is uh, probably the main reason why you may want to recruit these participants because you know that uh, they have a certain, they have experienced something that you're interested in or they, uh, some other characteristics that you're looking for. You know that uh, they have these characteristics because they are your friends. So this is shared knowledge too. You know something about them and you know that they have something interesting to say. So if you explain that, as I said before the, uh, the interview, this will probably be one of the biggest benefits of this approach. And I have recruited my friends uh, in the past for a research study and uh, the main reason I did it was uh, specifically because of what I just said. So I knew that uh, they shared certain characteristics and I knew that they shared certain experiences uh, that I uh, wanted to investigate. And at the same time I knew uh, what kind of people they were. So I knew 
uh, who's more you know talkative uh, who I, I get uh, I have this report with so uh, so it really helped my study I knew straight away I knew there would be no uh, time wasting I knew these people would give me uh, plenty of information plenty of data that I was hoping to obtain so as I said I shared some literature in the description uh, I do encourage you to explore this approach It's very important that if you decide to use uh, this approach in your study it's just very important that you demonstrate that you are aware of the possible risks that I mentioned and that you explain how you uh, plan or how you addressed these uh, risks in your study. I hope that you enjoyed this video, I hope that you learned something new. If you did, please like the video, leave a comment if there is anything uh, that you want to ask me, and if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing.